All right, what is up? The king, the king, the king, me, here today to do Zon Kill No Terror episode 6 review as usual. Now, let me just dive right in. This episode, main thing here is this, a change of pace, a whole new scheme, because normally it's... Sphinx. It's 9 and 12. Sphinx 1 and Sphinx 2. I like Curry. Hey! Normally it's them. They have their plans. They have their plots. They have the riddle. And then you have the police department. They simply try and solve the riddle. There's normally an underlining theme to the riddle. And we have found out recently that all of these bombings are not random, but they have, a, they're basically a part of the puzzle, if you would. And that's normally the format from episodes 1 through 4. Episode 5 was a little bit different, obviously. Episode 6, this episode is completely different. Because now you have 5, and she's calling the shots, alright? She is the law. And the law would dictate that the terrorists, the guys who normally are supposed to be the blonde planters, are now, in a sense, being held hostage. And... It is perceived by the media that it is them who are planning to bomb this airport, but in fact it's not them, and they have to defuse the bomb, so basically it's a trap. It's a trap set up by five, and not only are Sphinx 9 and 12 running around, they're trying to weave their way through this trap, but at the same time, you have the, the you have the police department who were ordered by the top brass not to involve themselves in this matter. Let the FBI take care of it, because that's what it is. It's essentially the FBI, some counterterrorism agencies, and then you have Nest. Apparently five is a quote unquote researcher at this facility called Nest. Uh, I forgot what the exact name meant, like the acronym meant, but whatever, there's a point, that's not the point. The point is that she's a member of this Nest group. Uh, Super Smash Brothers Nest, the fucking baseball bat and flying around and shit and psycho powers, but not on some, you know, M. Bison shit, but just psychic kinetic. Well, you, you, you get my fucking point. The point here is that when it comes to what's going on, 9 and 12, who seem to have everything in the bag, all of a sudden the bag is having a few punctured holes, and it's 5. She's the one with the goddamn pencil punching the damn holes in the plastic bag. So. All of a sudden, you have a situation where they have a trap going on for 9 and 12, and they're just going to go head forward. They're going to go right through this trap because they have to do it, because if they don't do it, then they're going to be seen as mass murderers. Because you're going to have a lot of people die in this airport if they don't do anything about it. So, the point here is that, again, when it comes to them being terrorists, they're not like full on, we're going to kill people, no. That's not what we were here to do. And you see that clearly in episode uh, last week. Where episode 5 last week, you have 9 and 12 go out of their way to try and stop the bomb that they themselves defused. They had faith in Chibasaki, he figured it out. But unfortunately you have the FBI coming there saying, no, 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 no. We'll take care of it, but they never did. And it's amazing how even though the top brass say, well, you know, it's okay, let them handle it. And they have a bomb unit there. The problem here is that they're still, they're, they're not doing shit. My problem with this is that the FBI and this counter, in, this counter terrorist agency and Nest, they don't seem to really care if the lives lost are in the high dozens or in the high hundreds, whatever, it doesn't matter. They, don't, they will have lives lost at the expense of their mission. Let's keep it simple. One more time. They will have lives lost at the expense of their mission, their job, which at this point in time just seems to just capture 9 and 12. And whether or not they're going to return 9 and 12 to the facility, don't know. No idea. Now, moving on, you have the you have a few police detectives, Shibasaki and cohorts, and they're saying, fuck that shit in the ass of the goddamn dildo. Because we're going there. We're fucking going there. Because this is, this is Nippon. This is Nippon Banzai, nigga. They wouldn't say nigga, but still, they just say Nippon Banzai. This is our shit. We going ham right now. And they're going ham. So, the thing here is that, like I said before, there's going to be a clear conflict between 
the FBI and the counter FBI. I'm gonna FBI. Goddamn FBI. The FBI, twelve and nine Sphinx, and the police agency. Because the police agency, first of all, it's a pride thing. Number one, all right. They they just can't sit back and let the Americans, America, just run roughshod over their city. Because it's their job to protect Tokyo. Not only that, but Five is malicious. She has no qualms killing people. None. I mean, you have 12 and you have, he's talking to Nine saying, like, she wouldn't actually do that, right? And he's like, no, no, no. She would do it. She would definitely blow up this airport if she needed to. And, of course, they'll get the blame. Now, granted. When it comes to the riddle, or not the riddle, but when it comes to the message this time around, it wasn't a YouTube video, it was like a universal text message or whatever. And like it was this whole code of Julius Caesar and Arabic. I don't know what I don't know what it was about really. All I know is that it was a whole change in the alphabet system that translated to numbers, that translated to coordinates to the airport. So it was very bland, there was no spice, no no zest. And it was something that she was like, kind of noticed, like, wait a second, like, is it really them? Because this seems off. It wouldn't seem as if, like, Sphinx would actually do this type of thing. They wouldn't just do, like, a text message, universal, and the call a day. No, they wouldn't do that. They'd actually do something more clever and have, like, a riddle and a twist. And, you know, they'd have some fun in this. But, no, it was no fun. It's just that simple message. So it was boring. So the point here is that you have all these conflicting pieces because you have clearly some individuals among the police who are like fuck this shit no like we're gonna do it ourselves then you have five who clearly isn't exactly the most caring person in the world but then you ironically have probably the most caring people in the world which are the terrorists nine and twelve and granted even though they hurt people in their actions it's for a greater cause probably which is again the facility like whatever it's called that that uh, for-profit organization that's a front. I forgot what it's called exactly, but whatever. So, overall, and there are a few things here that I want to talk about. Lisa is actually getting some part, which is good. Lisa's actually getting somewhere in this episode. She's actually going with them to, like, help out. So you have 9 and 12. They're being targeted clearly by the security cameras, and they're watching them. But Lisa... Just seems like a regular girl at the airport. So Lisa is going to be their key out. That's that's obvious to me. She, she's going to be their ticket. That's number one. And I love how you have her actually, for like the first time in the entire uh, series thus far, actually stand up and make a declaration and say, no, I'm doing this. I want to be useful. Tell me what the fuck to do. That's the way it is. And, he's, and she's staring down at I. Like, let me fucking help you. Let me, let me, I'm here, let me goddamn help you. And Nine's like, alright, fine, fine, alright, fine. Well, you go via train, we'll go via truck, whatever. So that was pretty cool. She, she's actually getting some courage, which is nice. Then, you have this odd little scene. Don't know what's going on there, but you have this odd little scene where 12, he explains how he has an ability to, like, see the colors of sound. Apparently, he mentioned how Lisa has a pale yellow sound color, which is odd. I, I forgot what the exact name was. But beforehand, he was actually looking up at the he was actually looking up at the uh, at the clouds, and it was like raining or like there were feathers that were floating up into the clouds, into the upper atmosphere, and he was just staring at them fly up. And I'm like, what the hell's happening? Like that was kind of weird. That's kind of iffy. Maybe that ties to the whole sound uh, seeing ability thing. But again, I'm not, I'm not too sure. And what I do want to say also is that you do have this growth in the character interaction between nine, no, between twelve and Lisa. So that's getting better. Their relationship is getting a lot better. Nine and Lisa is getting better too, but not to the same degree as Lisa and twelve. Because nine, in this sense, via obvious push from twelve, he's accepting Lisa more so now. And they are in a tight spot as well, so they have to kind of accept her help, you know, in, in order to get out. They could just leave her alone, but at this point in time, might as well at least try it out and see how it works out. And overall, that's pretty much it. So, this can go a lot of ways. And I do see 
the police being there, Shibasaki and friends, them being there may backfire upon the FBI. At the same time, it could bolster the FBI as well. So again, not too sure. And whether or not Nine can actually overcome, because it's mainly Nine. Nine is the one who has the trauma. Nine is the one who has this innate fear. Nine is the one who seems to always be, according to the flashbacks, what's hinted, he always seems to be overcome by Five. Five is always the one who has superseded Nine, who has always tricked Nine, who, in a sense, mentally abused Nine. That's what it really is. It's just, it's mental abuse. And can Nine overcome that and actually over and, and, and actually beat this game, even though the game is probably all bullshit? Because I highly doubt that you're going to have Five just simply let Nine beat the game and walk away scot-free. I highly doubt that. So, again, all the more reason why Lisa is going to be a scapegoat later on. So, that's my thinking, and I'm, I'm hoping that Nine can overcome this, because Five seems like a real messed up bitch, and honestly, she deserves to go night-night, just straight up night-night. So, I'm done. I'm done. King of Lightning. Overall, the episode, I think it's pretty damn good. I'm going to give it a good plus to great, and I will see you guys later. Rate the video, comment, subscribe, have a nice day.